is a Buddy Time podcast from Me Goody of Buddy Up. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Buddy Time podcast. I am Sin, one of the hosts for this podcast, and I'm very excited right now. But before we begin, allow me to introduce our two incredible, talented, handsome, and pretty hosts. Victor and Nicha, or just call her name. I mean, her name is name. Anyways, so Victor, please say hi to our lovely listener. Hey, podcasters! So, like Sin introduced me, my name is Victor, and I am extremely excited to be part of Buddy Time Podcast. So, a little bit about myself. My name is Victor Siharath. I am 27 years old, and I was born and raised in Australia. After living in Australia my entire life, I decided to move to the beautiful country of Thailand. And since then, I have now been here for about five years. And throughout my adventure here, I've been to Rungsit University for my bachelor's degree, and now I'm currently studying uh, strategic communication at. Chula Longkorn Universities for my masters. So I'm a performing artist. I am a actor, singer, dancer, and I am extremely excited to share some insight and get to know each and every one of you as this podcast progresses. So nice to meet you all. Interesting, Victor, as always. And name, who are you? What is your name? Hi guys, this is Name or Anisha. You can call me Name or. Nisha, either way. And I'm actually our host here, Childhood Friends. I was born and raised in Thailand. I got my bachelor degree here in Thailand and I just got my master from the UK. So I speak both English and Thai. And it's nice to meet you all here and can't wait to share my stories with all of you and get to know you all. So me and Nim, we are Childhood Friends. And me and Victor, we are friends from our master degree class in Jolalonggon University. So a really quick and short introduction about myself too. I am Sin. I am a Chinese born, but raised in Thailand. I can speak Mandarin Chinese, Cantonese, Thai, and English. But sometimes I find myself funny when I speak Thai. Ah, just because I speak Thai, I don't speak Anyways. Currently, I am also taking master degree in strategic communication management in Jolalonggon University. So we are really looking forward to share our stories and experience with all of you. We're just three buddies who would like to share some of our thoughts and experiences, just like how we share with our friends, and to provide some interesting and helpful insights to everyone here. So, without further ado, let's get into today's topic. Today's topic, we will talk about becoming a university student and getting into university life in Thailand and abroad. So, three of us. We'll be sharing some of our personal stories and our experiences during our transition into a university student, and some ways to adapt to a new place or new status. As most of us now are having online class, so what do you say about this university life? I definitely feel like university life is an experience that I will never forget, regardless if it would be my bachelor's degree or it is currently my master's. I feel like a university gives you opportunities beyond just academic. Um, it gives you experiences. It gives you gateways so that you can sort of meet who you really are. So, with that being said, you know, Sin, you you made a very good point. It's like. The fact that you have to adapt, and the things that you change, and the things that you sort of become as you venture through university life is actually really, really interesting. One of the biggest things that I found myself is I always pigeonholed myself. I would always say that Victor, you're just a dancer. You know, you're into performing arts. You can't escalate too much more than that. And one of the biggest things that university life taught me was that I can do so much more than I actually gave myself credit for. And the biggest thing was is that you know. 
I chose this bachelor degree out of the interest of what I wanted to do. And, you know, a lot of people don't actually get that opportunity because straight out of high school, sometimes you don't know what you want to do or what you want to become, but people sort of just do what's best because it's sort of what they've been told or sort of the expectations that are placed upon them as they progress through life. It is sort of the cliche Thai thing to do is graduate high school, go straight to university, finish your bachelor's degree, and then go straight into master's. But when I was raised in Australia, we weren't really taught that mentality. We were taught to finish high school and then after that, pursue whatever we wish to pursue, whether it be a career or you want to go to university, you can. It's a choice for you. So definitely, I was a very particular case. Um, straight after high school, I went straight into a performing arts full-time course, which is my certificate four. I did a full-time year of dancing. There was barely any academic involved. And then straight after that, I went straight to work. I worked on cruise ships. I worked in musical theater. I pretty much lived my performing arts life. And then, you know, it got to a point when I was 23 that I decided, you know, what, I'm going to move to Thailand and stopped my performing arts career per se. Then after that, I enrolled into university at a really late age when a lot of my classmates were 19, 18, 19. I was 23. There was a quite a four year age difference um, between ages. Might not look too big, but I definitely felt a lot more mature or a lot more older than a lot of my classmates. So, you know, it's all about perspective. And, you know, I am so grateful that I have chosen the path that I wanted and the degree that I wanted as well. Yeah, that sounds very special in a way because not everyone have that kind of experience like Victor's. And how about for you, Name? What do you think about university life? Well, for me, I totally agree with Victor that university life is, you know, just like another stage in our lives where we get to learn and grow and be exposed to more people from different backgrounds. Like, say, you know, we, we went to the same school and our school, we kind of like have a very small number of students, right? And most of us, we knew each other since we were elementary school. So it's just like a very close knitted group of people. And being in a university, you get to know more people people from like different backgrounds like even though we, we we have friends from different countries but it's different it's totally like a new group of people and it's just for us having three different experience I think this is also interesting because my experience is like totally opposite from what Victor has like I go straight to university rather than like ha taking a gap year because it's not something really typical in Thailand yeah, so that's, I'm actually kind of jealous of Victor also because, you know, you get to know more about yourself, discover about yourself before you decide of what you really want to learn and like develop your skills. Yeah, Victor's experience, he gets to discover himself before he make another decision for his life. And I guess that is something most of us, especially during our teenage time, it's always a question in our mind that what's our passion? How do we discover our passion? And I think this is also an interesting topic to talk about. But today, since we're talking about university life, three of us, we share very different background. Like for Victor, you have a special background. You came back to Thailand for university. What was the transition for you like before entering university? How did you prepare yourself to enter a Thai university? It's actually a really good question. You know, when I first came to Thailand, I didn't have the word university in my head at all. It was more like something that I fell upon and I chose because honestly, I wanted friends. It sounds really, really sad. But when I first moved to Thailand, the first year that I spent here, I was really, really lonely. I didn't really make any friends per se. It was all sort of like just going out and exploring Thailand by myself and with family. Like, don't get me wrong. It was a really good experience. But one of the things that I really missed during that time was that I didn't have any friends. And university for that, that was my thought, was the only opportunity that I could really meet people close to my age. So that was sort of the reason why I enrolled into university. And then as I progressed, you know, I always say this, university is like a luxury brand or a luxury bag that you want, for example, but you have to buy it on the internet. So what I mean by this is 
when we look for a university, we have to search, you know, especially if it's like expensive, you know, we want to make sure that we pick the right thing, the one that looks the best, the one that suits us the best. And, you know, it's everything that we need and everything that we want to look for, even though we're not sure what exactly we're looking for, but we just want a luxury bag, for instance. But the risk is, is that, you know, like all things that are online, you're not actually sure what you're getting yourself into and if you're actually going to get the real thing that you expected. And that's how I sort of metaphorically interpret selecting a university. I think it's sort of like when you go buy something, you, you, you have this impression in your mind that you want it to be like this. But then when you actually get it and you order it online and then you finally get the package and it's not exactly what you turned out to be, then there might be you're either really happy about it or you're either a little bit sad about it. But regardless, it's an experience. And I think that's the biggest thing that I found about transitioning into Thailand and especially Thai universities is that I wanted to make friends. That was my that was my luxury bag. And then I found the brand, which is Rungsit University. And after that, I ordered online, I enrolled. And once I got there, it actually exceeded my expectations of what I would of what I could do. So, you know, it's one of those things is like people think that this is the, this is it. I have to make the right decision. It's the biggest decision of my life. If I don't pick the right subject, I can't progress with my life. I'm here to tell you today that it, that's not true. You know, give yourself time to figure out what you like. Give yourself opportunities to make mistakes and, you know, discover yourself. Because at the end of the day, it's not one shoe fits all. And a lot of people, and I say this, a lot of people switch majors whilst they're in their bachelor's degree or master degree. Sometimes you think that something suits you, but then you find out that, oh, actually, I did a small little workshop in mathematics. This is never going to happen to me, but I did a small workshop in mathematics and now I'm a massive math person. So then I enroll into accounting or something like that. You know what I mean? There's so many ways to discover yourself. University is just that sort of playground for you to discover yourself. So honestly, I didn't have much expectations going into university or selecting a Thai university at all. I just wanted to make friends and I definitely achieved that. And on top of that, I also changed my perspective about academia and how to, you know, grow as a human being, but then also be responsible for yourself. So that is definitely something that I was really fortunate to have discovered throughout my entire university life. Well, I think for Victor, one of the things that was so clear for you is that you knew exactly what you're looking for, even before you decide to go into Rangsit University. You already have something in mind that you wanted friendship, like you have a specific purpose, and with that purpose, you took some action to make that happen. And in that process, you found that. Actually, you can do more with your choice, the choice that you make, and that is really something that I think a lot of us should consider doing. And what about name? We were in the same high school together in Thailand, and after that, you continue your bachelor's degree here in Thailand. How did you prepare yourself? Mine's like again, totally different from Victor, being from like living in Thailand in an. Thai society, I kind of like follow the system, you know, like where you just like what Victor mentioned in the beginning that okay, finish high school, go to university, finish your get your bachelor degree, go to work, then get your masters. So yeah, I kind of like follow that steps. And when we were in high school, um, we have subjects like accounting, economy, and marketing, and I kind of like gravitate towards marketing. So that's. So I decided, okay, this is what I want to do. So I just research for universities online. But then, since I was in an international school, I feel like I need to go to an international um university. So and back then, the choices were kind of like more limited than now. So in the end, I I just enroll in the main ones and then go sit on an exam, and yeah, I just got in. So yeah, it's kind of like different than what. Victor has like because I I didn't have a an idea of like oh because I want friends I I just need to in my mind like okay I need to get into the university because I need the degree to get jobs. Yeah, I think for most of us, the reason for us to attend the university is to get that certificate. But 
I wouldn't think of this before, but after a few years, especially after a few years of working, I think that experience is much much more important than just a certificate itself. Victor, you mentioned something quite interesting, which you started working right after high school. And to me, as someone who values real life experience more than just a certificate, what do you think are the pros and cons about working after high school, or Do you think it's better to go straight into university? That's a really tough question. Um, honestly, if I were to go back, I wouldn't change anything at all. You know, straight after high school, I had a very clear purpose that I wanted to be a performing artist. Like I, I said to myself, like I want to be a dancer. It was sort of the thing. I went to a performing arts high school as well, so you know, everything was sort of. Built for me to go in that direction. I moved out of home when I was 15, so I was born and raised in Canberra, and then my parents, you know, supported me completely about dancing and performing arts. They sent me to a performing arts high school in Sydney, which is three hours away, and then after that, I lived by myself, like in a in a campus, and just sort of fended for myself. And then from that, it just everything was about dance, everything was about performing arts, and you know, there was never the thought of. University for me, and then I went straight into work. And you know what? I actually feel like there's no right or wrong path. Like if to if I were to answer your question, Sin, what is better? I wouldn't know because everyone's journey is definitely different. But my journey made me realize that you know I'm more than what I put myself into. You know, I I for the longest time, ever since I sort of fell into the mix of performing arts. That's all I thought I was, you know, just a dancer, just a person who, you know, is good at dancing and can perform and has so much fun and enjoys it. But then, one of the things that I realize as I'm getting older is that we can't limit our capacity to grow. We can't limit our ability to absorb new things and learn new things. And I think, you know, the fact that I got to go, you know, work straight after high school, it gave me perspective. Working and doing something as a hobby is completely two different things. When I did it as something that I loved, it felt so good. It felt so vitalizing. But then the moment when it becomes a job and you depend on it, then it starts to trigger some things inside you. It got to a point where I didn't want to dance anymore, and that was the reason why I moved to Thailand. Is I wanted to take a break from this. I wanted to take a break from the whole dancing thing. I've been doing it for you know. 17, 18 years of my life. I just wanted to take a break, and then I discovered communication arts, and this is something that I was like, "Oh my gosh, what is this?" You know, honestly, I wanted to get into like performing arts type of field, but then in an in international program, they don't really have that. They only have sort of communication arts as like an advertising, PR, marketing sense. So I was like, "All right, you know, <laughs> I might as well go into university that's in n i t e s a d or like communication arts and see what happens. There could be opportunities for me." And within that, I actually fell in love with the fact that you know I got to learn about marketing, I got to learn about advertising, PR, journalism. You know, I got to understand the essence of communication. And one of the biggest things I think is so important is that I don't think I attained that much academic knowledge, but what I t- What I turned out to become is a good communicator. I feel like I'm a person who can speak um, and communicate thoroughly and express myself even better because of university. Beforehand, you know, I would speak non-verbally through my dancing, but now I prefer to speak verbally through my words, and it's something that I found out about myself in university. So, to go back to your question, Sin, honestly, I wouldn't change anything. I feel like the work experience made me. Become more passionate about how what to do. It made me realize that you know not to limit myself, and also it taught me about work ethic. You know, a lot of people don't really get that experience about working and you know having to be on time and having to you know make the money and do your best and being criticized. That was something that I got from working, and that made me become the person, the disciplined person I am today. In the terms of academia, so yeah, very interesting. Thanks for the question. Very thorough answer from Victor. Something that I totally agree as well is that with prior experience in working, putting ourselves in a real society, we just get to see so much more. 
experience so much more. It's a real life teaching from real people, and those are not some typical lessons we could get in the university itself. And sometimes, with prior experience from the society itself, it makes us to be a more responsible person. And somehow, with what we have learned from our daily life, working life, and when we Have that kind of knowledge in mind and get back to academic、um, lessons. It somehow make us learn even faster because we can relate what is written on the book to some real life example, something that we actually been through, and that will help us in understanding the terms, the concept even easier. And what about name? What is your thought on this? For your case. You're again very different from Victor, because you chose a path where you decided to take GED and enter university even before you graduate from high school. Actually, as I grow older, I kind of agree with both of you that ex- real life experiences are very important. Like sometimes we are so focused on being book smart that we forgot about you know being street smart. And like I, you have said, I took GED, which is like an a certificate, an equivalent of graduating from high school, which makes you、um, being able to. Enroll in the university faster. So I made this decision when I was young because I feel like I want to speed things up. I want to get into the university fast. I want to grow up. I want to be an adult. I want to be free. But now looking back, I feel like actually there's no need to rush at all. I mean. Being in high school with friends, those times are actually so precious. And me deciding to take GED, and it's like me sacrificing some of the best times of my life. So、um, I kind of regret that a little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, when we are in university, it's actually another life, something really different from high school. We don't really get to enjoy the time with the same group of friends, and some of us would even have to face the challenge of making new friends. And we never know what kind of new friends we will be meeting, especially if we're going to do a group project. And in those cases, we would definitely wish that we get a good. Teammates, good friends, somebody who we think or discuss openly—that it's a real challenge to some people. But since we quite encourage people to take university, like no matter in what time of your life. So, from our personal experience, what are some criteria you think are important to consider for choosing university? Because usually, the typical way is to consider. The name, the ranking of the university, but are those ranking really important? What What else do you think are important? I think the biggest thing is, you know, it's really funny that you say this because if I were to answer in an Australian context, I would just be like straightforward with you, being saying that you should just do what you want to do, pick the thing that you want to learn, regardless of the university. Go study it, graduate, start your job, start your career, or you don't even need to do a university. Go straight into the career path that you want. When we're talking in the context of Thailand, however, there's other elements that now come into play. It's sad, and it's also true that you know certain places do look at your university where you graduated. The thing is, I'm not going to mention the company name, but a big company in the advertising realm. Um, turned me down for an internship, regardless of my GPA being three point nine six. They turned me down because I wasn't from one of the top three universities. And the saddest thing about that is, is that I, I, I didn't feel too deflated because you know I, I get rejected on a daily basis being a performing artist. So I was just like, oh, you know what? There's more options. But I could only feel for the people who really wanted to 
you know, intern there, but can't because of their university. So, you know, to say that university doesn't matter, I would be lying to you and I would be lying to everyone who's listening that, you know, it doesn't matter. There is a small play, but at the end of the day, that doesn't mean too much in my, if I were to speak from my honest opinion, go for what you feel like is the atmosphere for you. Cause that's how I chose it. I remember me choosing universities. I am the biggest stalker. I literally sat down in the middle of the campus for Rungsit University and watched students walk by. I know it sounds extremely creepy, but I did that because I wanted to see what the atmosphere was like. And you know what? The atmosphere in Rungsit University really captivated me. I was just like, this, they, they actually have time to relax. They actually have time to, you know, socialize and have fun. And I just love the general vibe of Rungsit University. And that was the reason why I chose it. it. Wasn't because that I knew that, oh, you know, these celebrities graduated from here or it is the number one private university or it's actually not that well ranked in other, you know, I didn't even consider that. All I considered was that I feel comfortable here. I like it here. And I'm excited to meet friends who are from here. So that was the criteria that I chose for myself to select a university. As I've been living here now for five years, the reason why I choose Jula Longkorn University is because of that particular reason is that I wanted to make a connection. You know, Jula Longkorn is definitely one of the universities that is up there. It's one of the best universities in Thailand. Um, and it's been around the longest. And, you know, people always talk, oh, you you finished from Jula. You did this from Jula. And this word gets thrown around a lot. So then I was like, you know what? For my master's degree, let's try it. Let's try this Jula that everyone's talking about. And you know what? I really enjoy it. I'm not going to lie. Like... I really enjoy getting to meet you, Sin, getting to meet our other friends that we've grown so close to, you know, but just something that I wanted to say is that just because it's a top ranking university doesn't mean that you're going to have the best experience of your life. Um, I think regardless of where, what university you choose, where you go, you are going to have an adventure regardless. You just need to make sure that you stay on track and you know what you want. And those are sort of the criteria that I would say is ask yourself, do you know what you want? If you don't, see if you can take a gap year. See if you want to discover yourself. See if you want to just dabble into this first. And then if you want to change, you can. Don't limit yourself to one decision that will fit to you for the rest of your life because that's not what life is. Life is all about changing. Life is all about adapting. Life is all about experiencing new things that you would never have thought you've done. And then you grow to become this amazing human being who has all these experiences under your belt. So be open-minded, be ready to absorb whatever comes your way and just choose from your heart because if you choose from your heart, you can never go wrong. Again, I can't agree more with everything what Victor said. Like Victor can always come up with something very thoughtful and makes you think but here is one thing that i would say is quite debatable especially if we're in an asian country it's back to how most especially our parents how we how they think of the ranking of the name of the university i find a lot of the times that sometimes it's not just our choice to make we have to consider what our parents are thinking about the choice that we make like for example choosing university some of our parents they might not force us into choosing something that we don't like but they will express their hope that they want us to be in the top three university if we have the ability to so why not why take a gap year when you can just continue your study in a top university and then get to know some new friends, get some connection and finish that right away. That is a very different perspective when we say in Asian countries, we have this kind of things that we have to face with our family for some of us. Um, but in the Western kind of thinking, like what Victor said, you can just go take a gap year, think of, what is it really important to you? What do you want exactly? Well, as for name, you chose one of the top three universities for your bachelor's degree. And what's that criteria for you? Is, is it the ranking or is it something else? Did you really go there because you like that university or is it because of the name? 
Well, yeah, it can't be denied that ranking could play quite a role when it comes to university, especially in Thailand. But I just want to let you know that um, regardless of what university you go or went to, it doesn't mean that you're not good. Because from my experience, I worked with colleagues coming from different universities. Some of them didn't graduate from the leading ones. But actually, they're really, really good. Like, they're so good in what they're doing. So please don't be discouraged by that. As for me, when I has to, when I was choosing a university for my bachelor degree, um, to be honest, I didn't really focus a lot on the ranking, because I was looking into um universities with international programs, and there were not a lot of choices back then compared to now. So rather than looking at the ranking first, um. I focus more on the course provided by the by the university, and I ended up going to MUIC. And I have to say, um, I was happy with my choice. Like I have, a, I had a great time there. Like I love the environment. I love like many things about it. And then when I had to choose a university for my master degree, now it's a little bit different. Like I add in a little bit more criteria because. Now I would be an international student studying abroad. So of course, I I started off by looking at the course first, um, similar to how I I chose a university for my bachelor degree, and then I look through like all the courses and modules description. Like I literally went through everything, and then I. I looked into the university websites and see if they have any scholarships um, offered to international students, and also looked at the clubs and activities that they have for the for the univer um for the students, and also I looked into other um facilities and services that they have to support um international students, and last but not least is location. Because I don't feel like living and studying in the in the city. Because first, it could be expensive, and also there would be there could be lots of distractions. So I I try to find a place that is not too busy and not too far away from the city. Because living too far away from the city could be boring too. Um. Yeah. So those are the criteria that I I used. In, in in choosing a university, yeah. With what we have discussed just now, it's mostly about how we used to choose our university, how we used to prepare for the university. But as we all know, we are in the middle of the pandemic. A lot of things have changed. One of the interesting point we shared just now is the transition into university, or we can say adapting to a new place. Especially for a case like Victor, you said there's a huge difference in culture, communication, and I totally agree with that. And even for name, I believe there must also be something new that you have to adapt to when you transition yourself from a high school st- student into a university student right away. For now, we're in the middle of COVID nineteen pandemic. Most of us can only have online classes. It's something really, really new that we have to get used to, learn about it, and changing is not easy for a lot of us. For me, I continue my study in Hong Kong for two years, and I have to say it was not easy for me at all. Similar to Victor, I also have to face with the cultural difference, the lifestyle in Hong Kong. Even though I am a Chinese and I can speak Cantonese. Like my family, we are from the Canton area. I still took a lot of the time to get used to everything there. It was a difficult start for me back then, but I was really lucky to meet some great friends who helped me along the way, and I had some of the best times before I continue my bachelor's degree in Northern Ireland. And surprised to say that. 
because of my previous experience in Hong Kong, it was a lot easier for me to adapt to a completely different environment and lifestyle in Northern Ireland. And now that me and Victor were taking master degree in Jolalongon University, and we've been taking online classes since the first day of school, this is completely new for us. I well, at least for me, this is completely new. So. What are the things that we can do to help us get used to a new place, a new status? Especially, how do we adapt to this online class now? Honestly, I feel like the like like you said, Sin. It was pretty much the first day we were o- already in a Zoom meeting. Like I didn't know what Zoom was. I thought it was a car brand. I didn't even know what it was. And then they told us log in, and then we'll get started. And you know, I was so excited. Not gonna lie, Jula Longcon was definitely one of those universities that I really wanted to go to. I just finished my bachelor's, had my graduation ceremony, so much fun, and then about to start my journey. And then the first thing that they said to us is, "All classes are going to be online." My heart sank to my stomach. I was like, "What is this? Why is my master degree experience that is only a year and a half going to be on online?" But then they would give us hope by saying, you know, it's not permanent. It's gonna probably just be for the first semester, and then after that, we'll probably continue with classes in the physical form. I was really sad, not gonna lie to you, because I honestly, majority of my decisions about academics is related to the people that I meet and the connections that I'm gonna form. And as a person who, as you can tell by the way that you know I am, I'm a very talkative, bubbly, friendly sort of like. Interactive person. I love talking. I love hanging out, and that was a, the biggest fear about going on this the virtual journey with Jula Long Kong University. And my master's degree was that, oh my gosh, I have to do online, and then I'm just going to see these friends of mine in like little screens. Like, how is that going to be enjoyable? But it turned out to be one of the most interesting, and actually, surprisingly, one of the most beneficial. Platforms for me, because as a person who also works as a dance teacher and also does other jobs that does events, I dance for shows and all this type of stuff. I have a very busy schedule, and when you think about it, bachelor, uh, master degrees, you normally study at night time, so it will normally be between the times of six till nine at night. If I had to drive from my house, which is in m u n t o n g Tani. To go to Chula l o n g k o n University, it will take about forty-five minutes, not including peak hour traffic, not including finding parking. Like all these factors come into play: the petrol cost, everything about transportation. But now the fact that you do it online, I could literally be at an event and just log in and listen to a lecture. I can mute my microphone and listen to a lecture and not miss out on anything. However, if it was in the physical sense, I could not do two things at once. I would have to dedicate my entire time to focusing on going to class on time, and that's the biggest advantage. And you're probably thinking, "Oh no, it's online. I'm not going to meet my friends." Well, in actual fact, when things weren't as bad as they are now, we were able to meet up. We were able to meet up for study sessions, and I remember I met up with Sin at Starbucks at Siam Center for like our group assignment. And it was actually really fun to not have to be in the setting of a university, but in a setting of like a cafe, and it's just like friends hanging out, and then we're doing an assignment together, having coffee. It was actually a really, really interesting and good experience, and I really enjoyed every moment of it. And now looking back, I actually am glad that our my master degree life is based on an online platform. Though it is sad that I don't get to see my friends every day. But I'm also happy that one, I don't have to travel every day. Two, I don't have to make an effort in dressing up because only half of my top half of my body is shown on screen. I don't have to worry about finding tra- uh, parking. I don't have to pay for parking. It's all these pros that really outweigh the cons. So it's all about perspective. No matter what you do in your life, you have two choices. You either look at it in a negative way, or you look at it in a positive way. Or if you want to be neutral about it, you can. But you're either leaning towards one or the other. I choose to stay on the more positive side of things, and that's literally the things that you have to look for, especially during this pandemic. If we're not talking about university for a second, I wanted to say that you know it's all about perspective. The more that you do negative, 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 and you only look at the bad things, you're gonna 
sort of overlook the positive things that you get out of this. And I think that's a big thing, regardless if you're choosing a university, you're studying your life, you're about to work, you're about to do anything. Always try to look at it from a positive perspective. It's going to give you strength. It's going to give you motivation. It's going to give you passion. So yeah, I don't know how I segued into that, but I'm glad that I did. Um, <laughs> but yes, definitely being online has its pros and cons, but I definitely see more pros than I see cons. Definitely agree with the traveling part because as we all know, in Bangkok, traffic used to be the biggest headache for a lot of us and parking as well. Some of you might or might not know finding parking lots in the Jula area, it's also very difficult. So yeah, those pros that Victor mentioned, they are definitely true. And I think it's not just for um, Jula University, for other university as well, or other school that it's now having this online class. And for me, I think one of the good thing about having online class for some friends out there could be because not everyone is a very outgoing person like Victor who can just casually make friend say hi to somebody and boom we're friend not everyone is like that right I'm thinking there are some people they're a little bit shy they might not be as active and they they could be facing the challenge of saying hi, making new friends in a physical context, but they could feel more comfortable if it's an online interaction where there's just something different if we interact, get to know each other through this online thing. They could feel more safe in a way, I think. So this is what I am wondering as well, if somebody who is like that, did you feel safe because we are having online class what I mean by safe is um, you don't feel as panicked as when we actually have to take physical class seeing new people right away that that is what I have in mind and I would really love to know if you know any of you could let us know too so how about for you name did you ever experience any online class before yeah I do have some experiences with online classes but I would say I'm the type of person who prefer an actual class over an online class just because I feel like it is easier for me to focus but I do agree that um, online classes give us student an autonomy over how we go about with our study times um, it's just that we have to be really really disciplined or else we would fall behind yep it has both pros and cons, so yeah. Um, but I do know that um, a lot of students right now are having a hard time um, dealing with, you know, online classes and keeping up with classes. But um, with the current situation, there's not much that we could do to, to change the setting, no matter how, how much we want it to. So I feel like what's important right now is for us to try and focus on how we could make this work and how we could make the most out of the situation. Yeah, well, in difficult times like this, I think we should even stick with each other more than before, even though we don't get to see each other that often. But even through online or actual context, we just should always stay connected although we are facing these inevitable changes. Just believe that these changes are going to make us even stronger in some way. And we will continue our topics on ways to adapt to online class in our next episode. We will share more tips and experience with you on how we have our online classes. So today, thank you, Victor and Name, for sharing with us. And it's always nice to hear from people of different backgrounds sharing in their own perspective. And thank you all for listening. We hope you enjoy today's buddy time with us. Also, feel free to follow me, Goody, on Instagram at M-E-G-O-O-D-Y-T-H for more updates on our show and activities. Share your thoughts or questions with us in the comment section of the post for today's topic so we can discuss together. Let me know whether you are the one who prefer online class or actual class and hope you will join us again next Thursday. Until then, have a great day.